What if ancient civilizations didn't just build monuments, but actually harnessed energy? I'm not talking about electricity as we know it, but something far more fundamental. Geometric, acoustic, magnetic, and solar power. Energy drawn directly from the Earth itself. The evidence is scattered all across the world. Pyramids perfectly aligned to the stars, megaliths placed on powerful magnetic ley lines, and temples tuned to specific resonant frequencies. We've always assumed they chose these designs for religion or ritual. But what if the true purpose was power? Let's start with the most famous structure on Earth. The Great Pyramid of Giza is not just a tomb. In fact, no mummy has ever been found inside its main chambers. Instead, it's a masterpiece of engineering. The pyramid is aligned to true north with an astonishing, almost impossible precision. Its internal chambers, like the king's and queen's chamber, are placed at mathematically meaningful ratios. Its outer shell was once lined with quartz-heavy limestone, and quartz is piezoelectric. That means it converts pressure into an electric charge. Sound, movement, vibration, all could be turned into energy. Could the pyramid have been a giant resonant generator? Inside the king's chamber, sound doesn't adjust echo. It reverberates at a specific frequency that has been shown to induce trance-like states in the human brain. And deep below, the subterranean chamber resembles nothing so much as a capacitor. This isn't just architecture. This is engineering on a planetary scale. But Egypt isn't the only place this pattern appears. Cultures that supposedly never met, the Egyptians, the Mayans, the Cambodians, and ancient Chinese dynasties, all built pyramids. They share the same angles, the same orientations, and often the same proportions. Why? The pyramid shape itself naturally amplifies and channels energy, especially sound and electromagnetic fields. It's a geometric resonator. This isn't a cultural coincidence. It points to a shared functional knowledge that somehow spanned the globe. And the evidence gets even stranger when you look underwater. Off the coast of Japan lies the Yonaguni Monument, a massive submerged stepped structure that some geologists believe is man-made. What's fascinating is its placement. It aligns with ancient ley lines that connect sacred sites all across the globe. Many ancient cultures mapped these energetic grids, creating not maps of land, but maps of power flow. It is possible that ancient civilizations used the Earth's natural energy grid the way we use our electrical power grids today, tapping into specific nodes for power. But how did they even understand this energy? It seems they started with the most fundamental force of all. Sound. At many ancient sites, rooms and halls are acoustically engineered to resonate at very specific frequencies. At Chavin de Huantar in Peru, archaeologists found conch shell trumpets that produce deep, powerful tones that vibrate the entire temple complex. At Malta's Hypogeum, a single human voice can create infrasound, low-frequency waves that can affect the human nervous system and even brain activity. Sound can move water. Sound can levitate sand into intricate patterns. In modern laboratories, we are just now reproducing the ability to levitate small objects with sound waves. So what looks to us like a ritual chant may have been a form of advanced technology, and sound connects directly to energy fields. Ancient monuments are very often built on geological fault lines and at points of magnetic anomaly. This is where the Earth's natural electromagnetic field is at its strongest. Think about it. Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, Giza, Angkor Wat, the Nazca Lines. They are all placed on what appears to be a global grid of energy. Either this is the greatest, most widespread coincidence in human history, or these civilizations knew exactly how to find and tap into planetary power. But did they use it for light, for communication, or perhaps for healing? The idea isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. In modern-day Iraq, archaeologists found small ceramic jars containing copper cylinders and iron rods. We call them the Baghdad batteries. When these jars are filled with an acidic liquid, like vinegar or lemon juice, they generate a direct electrical current. They are 2,000 years old. This proves that ancient cultures understood the principles of electricity, but they didn't seem to mass-produce it. Why? Perhaps because electricity was not their primary energy source. Their real power came from something much more sophisticated, geometry, vibration, and earth resonance. 
So this leads to the big question. What happened to all of this knowledge? If ancient civilizations truly harnessed natural energy, why don't we use it today? The truth is, knowledge is fragile. A catastrophic drought, a devastating famine, a great flood, a collapse in leadership, any of these can cause a civilization's entire information network to simply disappear. And over generations, myths become stories. Stories become superstition. And superstition eventually becomes forgotten. But the structures remain. Stone does not forget. And here's the most important part. We look at ancient monuments as mysteries, as relics of a forgotten past. But maybe they were instructions. Not monuments to gods, but monuments to knowledge. Knowledge of how to live with the earth, not against it. If ancient civilizations truly harnessed these natural energies, then they weren't primitive. They were advanced in a way we no longer are. And the question isn't just, did they harness this energy? The real question is, will we ever learn how to again? Thank you so much for watching. If this sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to join us on our next exploration into the past's greatest secrets.